In this video, we are going to introduce the concept of deadlocks and let's see how deadlocks are caused. So we know that a computing system consists of resources and these resources, they may be partitioned into several types or we can say different classes of resources like R1, R2, R till Rm if there are M types of resources. And what are these resources? These resources can be CPU cycles, the memory space can be a resource, the various input output devices are resources, the semaphores, the locks, these are all system resources and each is a different type of a resource. And each resource type can have, let's say, WI identical instances. So for example, let's say we have a printer of a particular type, a particular configuration and this is a resource. If there are two or three printers of exactly the same type, they are totally identical, then we say that there are three instances of this resource P. So each resource RI, in this example the printer, can have multiple identical instances. It can be a single instance as well as multiple instances might be present in the system. So if any thread or process it requests an instance of a resource type, then allocation of any instance should satisfy the request. So if there is any process which wants the use of a printer, then if these three are identical instances, then allocating any of these printers would satisfy the request of the process. So each process, whenever it wants to use a resource, it will follow the three steps. First, it has to request for that resource. So if the resource is present in the system, the process has to send in a request for that particular resource. Then it will use that resource and then it will release that resource. And the thread may request as many resources as it requires to carry out the task that has been assigned to that process. So any process which requires any number of resources, as long as the number does not exceed the total number of resources available in the system. If the number exceeds the total number of resources available, then that means that request cannot be granted to that particular process. Now, any process which requests a resource and if that resource is managed by the kernel or the operating system, then the operating system will check whether the thread that has requested the resource has been allocated the resource or not. This is the job of the operating system. So it will maintain a system table and where it will record for each resource whether that resource is free or it is allocated and if it is allocated then to which thread or process that particular resource has been allocated. So in this way that system table keeps a record for each available resource in the system. Now if the resource that was requested by the thread, if it is currently allocated to another thread, then the requesting process or thread will be added to the queue of threads waiting for the resource. Suppose if there is one printer in the system and multiple threads have requested for this printer and it is already being utilized by some process. So all the process, let's say process P3, which has put in a request for this system, this particular printer, and there will be a queue for all these processes who have requested for this particular printer. So if the printer is already been assigned to another process or another thread, then the requesting thread will be added to the queue of the threads which is waiting for that resource and there would be a queue for each type of uh, instance or the resource present in the system. So when can we say that a set of threads is deadlocked? So we can say a, the set of threads is deadlocked when every thread in the set is waiting for an event and that event can be caused only by another thread in the set. So suppose we say that P1, P2, P3, let's talk about processes right now. 
so we say that these are the three processes which are deadlocked that means that each process over here is waiting for an event and what is that event this event is resource acquisition and release so each process has requested for some resource it is also holding some resource it is waiting for the release of that resource by the other processes so we can say that this set of processes or threads is deadlocked let's take an example suppose there are two semaphores s1 and s2 s1 is initialized to 1 and s2 is also initialized to 1 and there are two processes p1 and p2 let's say p1 starts to execute and it executes this instruction wait on s1 when it waits on s1 s1 is currently having a value 1 so when it waits on uh, s1 so this value will become 0 now let's say process p2 starts running there was a context switch and process p2 starts running so it waits on s2 so the value of s2 becomes 0 now p1 starts to run again and it waits for s2 but what is s2 s2 is currently 0 so it is just waiting over here for s2 and then p2 starts running and it waits on s1 but again s1 is being held by p1 so p2 cannot get s1 so what has happened now p1 is holding s1 but p1 is requesting s2 and s2 is being used by p2 and p2 is waiting for s1 so each of these two processes are holding some resource and waiting for another resource which is held by some other process had this been the case that p1 had run completely and then p2 would have run then it would not have been a problem first p1 would have waited on s1 then on s2 and then finally it would have released the semaphores and then if p2 had run then deadlock would not have occurred but because of the context switch p1 has got hold of s1 and p2 has got hold of s2 and each is waiting for the other semaphore so this has resulted in a deadlock the same can happen if there are threads involved instead of the processes. Now let's see what are the necessary conditions to identify whether a deadlock can arise or not. So there are four necessary conditions and a deadlock can arise only if all four of these conditions they hold simultaneously. The first condition is of mutual exclusion that means only one process at a time can use an instance of a resource so like if there is resource 1 and it is being used by p1 so if there is one instance only at this time so only p1 can use that resource r1 that means p2 or any other process cannot use that particular resource if that resource could have been used by multiple processes then deadlock would not have arisen so mutual exclusion has to be there that means at any given time only one process at a time can use a resource so this is mutual exclusion second is hold and wait that means a process is holding at least one resource and it is waiting to acquire additional resources held by other processes like we saw just in the example of semaphores p1 is holding r1 and p1 is waiting for r2 r2 is being held by p2 and p2 is waiting for r1 so each is holding at least one resource and waiting for additional resource which is held by some other process so this is referred to as hold and wait holding one resource and waiting for some other resource which is held by some other process third condition is of no preemption that means any process which is waiting for some resource cannot preempt the process which is holding that resource so if p2 is waiting for r1 over here so we can see that p2 wants to use r1 but p2 cannot preempt p1 and take away r1 from it Similarly, P1 cannot preempt P2 and take away R2. So this R1 has to be released by P1 voluntarily 
and R2 has to be released by P2 voluntarily. So only when the process has finished using that resource and releases it voluntarily, then only the other process can use it. So there is no preemption. Fourth condition is the circular weight. Circular weight condition states that there exists a set of processes P0, P1 and so on. So suppose there are n plus 1 waiting processes such that P0 is waiting for a resource which is held by P1. So suppose we have these processes P0, P1, P2 and P3. Let's say four processes. So and there are let's say four resources over here. Then P0 is waiting for a process which is held by P1. So P0 is waiting for R1 which is held by P1. And P1 is waiting for a resource R2 which is held by P2. And P2 is waiting for a resource R3 which is held by P3. And P3 is waiting for a resource R0 which is being held by P0. So there is a circular set of processes. So there is a circular weight. P0 is waiting for R1 held by P1 which is waiting for a resource R2 held by P2 and this P2 is waiting for a resource R3 held by P3 and P3 is waiting for the resource which is held by the first process P0. So this set of processes, the set of waiting processes such that each process is waiting for a resource held by the next process. So this is a circular weight. So all these four conditions, if they are present, then there is a chance of a deadlock. A deadlock may arise. And how we can identify deadlocks and how we can prevent or avoid deadlocks, this we will see in our next videos.